G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today we're taking a look at the Outkit Elan Hooped Bivy. Now this is one I'm hoping to be using over the next five or six night out on the Bilberman track. So I'll put it up and then we'll take a closer look. Okay, we have two poles, both of the same length, so no need for colour coding, and it can go in any of the sleeves. Now that's all we really need to do for starters. So just come with pegs and I'll give you a quick look at them. Okay, it comes with seven pegs of aluminium ones. Very similar to most of the stuff like the nature hike and groundhog and that. Only short, but we don't really need much more because we're right down low to the ground, so it's not going to get pulled much with the wind. It's got the power cord, which is a good thing to help pull it out. Oh yeah, that's the shape of them. This ground seems extra hard, so I'm not going to be pushing them all the way in. Ones won't even go in at the end, so uh, the, the ground's way too hard, but that's it really. Got two pegging points at the bottom. We've got two either side of the actual hooped area at the end of each hoop, and we've got one at the back, which I'll show you in a moment. At the bottom of the bivy, we've got a loop there and there to uh, just stake it out. One thing I don't like about these, if I'm going to be going stealthy or anything, is how reflective these ones are. But that's only something minor. But third one on top, so we can tie that up to a branch 
while using our trekking poles to give you more foot space in the bivy. Let's hold it up. That's the actual foot box when you've got it pegged up. At the head end, the first thing you'll notice is we've got some mesh here. And what that's for is to allow the airflow. And what you'll see later on the front, front uh, we can either zip it all the way up or we can zip it with the mesh in place over this side. So it's going to allow a nice airflow going through. And because this is the main area where you're breathing, this is where you're going to get the condensation. So allowing this airflow to go through is going to reduce that, which is a good thing. Another thing we've got for the bad weather is this, which we can pull out and peg down there. So really we only need the two pegs one end and one this end to hold it in place. Let's roll that back up and we'll have a look on the inside. Now this is just the old toggle and the elasticated loop to hold that in place. So that's quite easy to do up and roll up. The actual toggle's held by elastic as two, so you're not having to struggle, you can actually pull it out, put it in, nice and easy. We've got a large flap here, so if it's going to be stormy, it comes all the way back, the zip's there, but the actual flap comes all the way back here. Uh, the zip is here, so you've got this area, which is about five, maybe six inches overlapping the zip. So that looks like it's going to be uh, the end that you're going to have unzipped at night to let some air flow in because up here the flap is a lot narrower it gets wider and wider as we go and the zips seem to work nice and easy and there's that bug net so what we're going to do with this one is Zip that all the way over to this point and then just do this one up to there. The flap hangs over, but you've got this mesh, so there's your flow coming from the back, coming out where your face is. Which I like this idea about the larger flap. So let's do that now and then the bug net and look it is a double zipper so you can zip that from both ways like I said if you want a vent in here underneath that we've got the flap over the vent allowing you to breathe and get oxygen now you should never do a bivy up all the way because even though they say it's breathable it's not breathable enough to keep you alive and you will suffocate this zip here is a three quarter length zip so it will go down three quarters of the way of the actual bivy itself we've got a double flap we've got a smaller one under at the bottom and then the large one on the top that's going to protect you from any water getting there excuse the flies are really buzzing on the inside now let's have a look Throw that back. A lot of people comment on this and I tend to agree with them with it being white on the inside, a nice light colour, it doesn't feel so claustrophobic. So when you put your head torch on whilst you're in here it's just going to reflect and make it easier to find what you're looking for. Now the bug net, this too has a little toggle and a bungee there to hold that up out the way. If you're not going to be using that, it's not going to be dropping in your face, which is a good 
good uh, idea that there. This bungee going across, and so you can slip your mat underneath, and it'll hold your mat in place. Right, let's give it a pull back. Yep. Size-wise, it looks really long. So what I'm going to do is get my sleep mat out, and I'm going to put it in there and see how far down the actual baby it goes. Now this is just a regular mummy. Put the dirt in there. Make sure there's nothing in there to puncture the sleep mat. Yeah, it's just a regular mummy sleep mat. This one is, I think it's about two inches thick. what that bungee is meant to be for. Hold in here, sleep, sleep mat there. Perfect positioning, how's that? Yeah, that is all set up. Do have that's the bottom of the sleep mat here. Just gonna get my pack. Yeah, by that, just put it on top. I hope I can get my pack in there. No, I don't have the sleep bag, uh, sleeping bag, and everything in it. Let's put it in and have a look. How about that? My pack fits all the way down and it's about an inch past the uh, sleep mattress. Let's have a look, shall I? Give it a try out. Now I'm about five foot six and rain in there with the way I got it set up about a few inches at the top and about an inch between my feet and the uh, my um, pack but the temperature just zipping it up for a few seconds you can feel the temperature just raise, rising face wise let's have a look you can see I've got about 
say four and a half, five inches away from my nose there. We go all the way back, so I breathe. So we've got six inches between my mouth and the peak here. And again, I forgot the bug me uh, mesh down. I'm not going to do this up, it's too warm. But with the bug mesh down, I'm going to be able to breathe straight out. I can feel the airflow coming from the back here. open I can feel the temperature rising in there. Now temperatures over the next week or so uh, my sleeping bag is rated to 7 degrees centigrade it's the uh, snug pack jungle bag and the lowest temperature they reckon in the local town is going to be 7 so going out bush we're probably going to drop down to 5, 4, between 4 and 6 say but I think with the actual extra layer here, I'm going to be nice and snug. It's going to hold the heat in. So that means I'm going to be able to use this sleeping bag for a lot longer after the uh, well, going through winter and coming in, uh, yeah, through autumn. Uh, so when I get to closer to the summer, it's going to be not needed this bit, the bivy. Uh, or spring, I reckon this sleeping bag will see me all the way through now here in Australia. Probably actually into winter too. Uh, yeah, it's going to save me money. I'm not going to have to, even though I've got different sleeping bags. I was looking at another one to bridge the gap between this and my down top quilt. But I think with this, just feeling it and having that gap between me and the top of this, gave me another insulation. Of airspace to keep warm before it actually goes directly out. So yeah, so far I like this. I do like it. On the inside at the back here, we've got one, two pockets to store your, you know, your mobile phone, your glasses. There's nothing on the top. No pockets up there or on the sides. What I'm going to do is before I roll it up, because I'm going to pack this all away as one. I'm actually going to put my sleeping uh, sleep mat inside of my sleeping bag, so I've got less space in the sleeping bag. So it's going to be that little bit warmer. By putting the sleeping mat inside this uh, sleep bag, it's reducing the space in the sleeping bag. Now, if your sleeping bag's tight, you don't really want to do this because it's going to be clinging to you and it's going to be uncomfortable but because this sleeping bag is not a mommy one it's not tight I can get away with doing this so now as you can see there's plenty of room there and now I've probably gained one, maybe two degrees centigrade by doing that. But yeah, having a my pack sitting at the bottom there, that's I think I've only got one pack larger than that when it's empty. So that's going to be good. I'm looking forward to this one. I think I've got about five or six days out on a Bibbleman track. Uh, if it gets too warm in this, all I'll do is, because I don't have any jungle bag that's got a bug net built in, I'll just use a sleep mat and a sleeping bag. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I do like my bivvies, so, uh, the last couple of years I've started to get into them more. They're so much easier to use. Uh, if you want to go away early in the morning, you don't have to pull all your tent poles out and then all your tent and put it all up, take everything out of your tent and put all that away, then never put your tent away and then pack that in your pack. Where with this, I'm going to roll it up in a moment. 
I'm going to have the sleep mat, the sleep bag and the bivvy and the pillow all in there and then I'll just roll it up and I'll throw it in the bottom of my pack and get this pack out now this is a new Helicon Tex Summit 40 litre backpack and as you can see I've added a few pouches on it it just made it more difficult to get in there but it still went in with room to spare so as long as the back panel fits in going across that was just great oh, keep the peg out everything down and roll it up let's give it a go looking at my pack I'm going to need to fold this into three parts I think so it fits in the bottom of my pack rolled up without messing around with it we've got black off the charcoal on the ground here that's going to fit in the bottom of the pack quite nice here we go Oh, let's do the same and uh, use a snook pack special forces bivvy. I'd leave my sleep mat, my sleeping bag and pillow everything in there and roll it up to the size where it would just sit nice and comfortable at the bottom of my pack. So, this is slowly got a little bit bigger but nothing serious but it should still go down. Air caught in the sleep mat. So it's closed itself again. Oh no, it's open. Ah, oh, it's a pillow. Hasn't deflated all the way. Bugger. Okay. Alright, let's get back in there for a minute. Now this pillow I haven't used that much, I've still been testing it and keep forgetting this one doesn't go down as easy as my other one. There it is. the width of my pack at the bottom so I was lucky so there we go nice and comfortable and I'll pop it back in there the original bag I've got the poles down the side here and they 
get the steps in there nice and easy. Got all them bokers don't need any more in there. Ah, oh, hope you enjoyed that video. And it's giving you an idea about the Outkit Elan Hoop Bivy. After using it for a while, I will do an update review, let you know how it goes, what it's like over the next five or six days in a mount bush. There's some cooler temperatures and it's going to dub uh, into the, I think it said the warmest, it's going to be about 14 and 15 one night. So, it's going to get a test. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And if you have and you're not already a subscriber, go down below and click on the subscribe button. Click the notification bell next to it and select all. Click the thumbs up button, the like button. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.